Today, Zeb and I are setting out on our longest self-supported bike tour yet. Seven days, including a rest day, from Kanazawa to Matsumoto and back again. It's a 430 mile trip, or nearly 700 kilometers, with 33,192 feet of elevation gain. It's about 5.30, and me and Zeb have started our latest adventure. This will be the longest bike trip that we've done so far. We're leaving from Uchinada, which is just outside Kanazawa, the capital of Ishikawa Prefecture. We'll be riding through Toyama and Gifu prefectures before getting to Nagano Prefecture, and stopping in the towns of Hida, Kanayama, Tsumagojuku, Matsumoto, and Shirakawago. We made it about 45 minutes in, so we just started, but Zeb is repacking his bag so that it, the weight distribution is a little better. So I thought I might show you what the bags are that we have for this trip. So they're both Revely spine lock bags. I have a smaller one. Zeb has a 16 liter bag, so he can pack a lot of stuff. And Zeb's got a Rafa handlebar bag. This is a moose pax bag, which is made from our friend that we met in North Carolina. On day one, we got up bright and early to ride as much as possible before the hot summer sun was fully out. Sunrise is at 4.30 in the summer here, so it was definitely an early start. The first day would take us 75 miles, or 120 kilometers, to Hida in Gifu Prefecture. From Uchinada, we rode up and over into Toyama Prefecture, where we followed the Jinzu River into Gifu. From there, we followed the Miyagawa until we arrived in Hida. Hida refers to a general area in the northwest corner of Gifu Prefecture, but it's made up of four municipalities, Takayama, Hida, Gero, and Shirakawa. This area gets a ton of snow in the winter, but with the hot temperatures baking us on our ride today, it was pretty hard to imagine it in the cold. This area is best known for its beef, which comes from the black-haired Japanese Wagyu cattle breed, fattened for at least 14 months. There's also high-quality timber found here, and the local carpenters have a high level of craftsmanship because of this. Look where you can get to now! We made it to Hida! Stop to get some more water at the vending machine. Before checking into our guest house for the night, we rode into the outskirts of Hida proper to pick up food at a family mart. After that, we enjoyed a local campground's facilities to freshen up, since it was still too early to check into the guest house. We made it to Hida, and we're at a campground right now, and we got some snacks at the 7-Eleven, and also some dinner for tonight, because we're staying in a guest house that doesn't have meals. And so I was filling up some water at this really nice little sink area that the campground has. We're gonna hang out here for a couple hours and go to a cafe and then be able to check into our guest house for tonight. We had lunch at the cafe and youth hostel, Nanuk, which was located at the foot of the hill from the campground. Magical. Lunchtime. They're like, welcome. <laughs> The food was colorful and delicious, and the owner was really kind. Can't wait. We got some fish curry, and it's very picturesque out here. The guest house is around here somewhere. We're here early, which is kind of nice. I like getting up at five sometimes. We rode up to our guest house from lunch, where we spent a little time relaxing by the creek until check-in. So we're just hanging out by this very nice creek until we can check into our guest house. Guest house Tomo was like staying with a friend, and it was very homey. I was surprised by how huge and spacious the upstairs was. There wasn't any air conditioning, but at night it got down to 19 degrees Celsius, or 66 Fahrenheit, so we didn't get too hot. So our guest house is so nice. The owner is really friendly, and it must have he must have just had a ton of people here because he was running around really frantically <laughs> getting our room ready and everything. So I kind of feel bad that we showed up like right after three, uh, 
but yeah, it's really nice up here. We have this whole upstairs room just for us. It's massive and the windows are open and the breeze is coming through. You can hear the cicadas a little. So yeah, it's very pleasant. I could go to sleep right now. <laughs> The next day, we had another early start. We were pleasantly surprised by the brisk air and the fog in the valley. On this day, we were riding to Kanayama, which was an 86 mile or 139 kilometer journey. We made sure to fuel up with our first kombini stop of the day for breakfast. Breakfast time. It's 5.30 and it's 19 degrees out. It's great. It's pretty nice. Not long after starting, we stopped in Hida Furukawa's old town. Wow, look at the koi fish. Wow. Hida Furukawa is only 15 minutes away by car from Takayama, a larger and more popular city that we'll ride through later. However, this smaller town was very charming and I enjoyed being able to see both. Despite our early departure, we came across many people out on their morning walks and they were all eager to greet us with a good morning. Unfortunately, here we realized that Zeb's crank was loose, which was a bit of a concern. I was mainly worried that we would have to go to a bike shop and wait in town for one to open, but luckily he was able to use our multi-tool to tighten the lock ring and get it to stop moving. While Hida Furukawa was very quaint and scenic, Takayama was more grand. Wow. As we rode along the river, we passed through a morning market which hadn't officially opened yet, but it was already beginning to buzz. One negative of traveling by bike is that it limits your purchasing potential, but that's definitely a positive for our wallets. <laughs> Look at all these bottles. All the sake. From Takayama, we made a slight detour to follow the Sisaragi Kaido to Gujo. Sisaragi is the sound of babbling that a stream makes. This road was recommended to us by someone we met at a cafe in Kanazawa, who lives in Gifu Prefecture. He said he enjoys riding his motorcycle on this road, so we gave it a try. It was a great road that we'd recommend anyone to use. After descending into Gujo Hachiman, we were able to see the castle in the downtown area. Gujo Hachiman's castle is a yamashiro, or a mountain castle. It added a good bit of elevation, but we rode our bikes up to the castle. This was originally built in 1559 by the local feudal lord, but it was destroyed during the Meiji period. This version was rebuilt in 1933. We didn't pay to go inside because at this point we felt like we were leaving behind puddles of sweat, but it was a really cool castle from the outside and there was a great view of the town below. Interestingly, Gujo also happens to be the fake food capital, meaning that they make the most amount of fake food display products that you see outside restaurants. The town itself is beautiful, split by the Yoshida River that feeds directly into the larger Nagara River. After our castle visit, we stopped at Cafe Kokuchi on the Yoshida River, which was another recommendation from our friend. Oh. She said kids could dance. Ice cream! Yay! I'm so happy. Thank you. <laughs> Zeb and I agreed that this cafe had the best french fries we've had in all of Japan. 
The ice cream and the coffee were really good too. From the cafe we rode to a convenience store to stock up for the final road section before leaving Guzhou. The benefit of living in Japan, all the convenience stores, is you can get Coolish, which is just frozen uh, yogurt. It's ice cream. Yeah, but if you buy one, you can take it and put it at the top of your bibs, underneath your jersey, and you have a nice little ice pack. And it feels really nice. It's a good tip from Zeb. It's hot today. We climbed out of Gujo on road 256 to get over to Kaneyama, which is a town in the Gero district of Gifu. Once in Kaneyama, we swam in the Maze River before checking into our guest house. It was so refreshing. Oh my, be careful. Oh, I've been waiting all day for this. It feels so good. <laughs> it's so cold. I couldn't finish my fries at the cafe, so I put them in my pocket. <laughs> now I have Riverside fries. Peak cozy time right now. <laughs> it finally went under. It is refreshing. It's just this water is like, to me, legitimately it's cold. It's perfect. It's like the perfect summer day temperature. It's on the chilly side of cold. It's not like frigid. I'm gonna need to lay in the sun after frigid. this. This area has a lot of trout fishing, which is cool. There's our little guest house for the night. And it's an izakaya, so maybe we can eat dinner there. But yeah, we already changed. We're still gonna shower, <laughs> but we already changed because we got in the river. So yeah, we're in comfy clothes now. Kaneyama is also home to this unique tourist attraction, which our host was pleased to show us, saying that the buildings reminded him of Howl's Moving Castle. There's a cool maze of buildings and small alleys, and probably not something anyone would go out of their way to visit Kaneyama for, but it was a neat place to walk through and see. Our guest house for the night was located in an izakaya, or a bar restaurant, on the upstairs floor. It ended up being extremely convenient since it was a rainy night and we could eat in the same building as we were staying. It was also quieter than we expected upstairs, which was really nice. Thanks for watching so far, and stay tuned for the next part where we'll talk about our tour continuing on the old Nakasendo Trail. See you then!